Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Lincoln Community Church. We call this place home, and if today is your first day with us, we want to say, welcome home. This has been a very busy week this week. We look in the Old Testament book of Psalms, Psalms 133.1, how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. And here we are, there's going to be 300 of us here this morning dwelling together in unity, but this week was very busy. We had the summer the women's ministry summer salad event and it was very well done thank goodness it was on thursday there was a group of men who took every chair out of this sanctuary they moved them to the back of the uh, church and then they brought 20 tables out and they set them up the women came in the next day and they decorated our sanctuary it was beautiful Yesterday, they came together, and uh, uh, everybody came together, over 160 women. They came together to fellowship, to eat, to hear an inspirational speaker. And when it was over, the women cleared the tables. And those men, they cleared up the, the tables, they cleaned up the, uh, cleaned up the chairs, and they brought the 444 chairs that you're sitting on back in here. And then they did the dishes. <laughs> Behold how good and pleasant it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. That's what we do here at Lincoln Community Church. We take care of each other pretty well, don't we? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you love us and call us your children. We thank you for the Holy Spirit's gifts that you've given us so that we might use them to serve you and glorify your name. We would invite your spirit to fill this room this morning. Heavenly Father, touch our hearts and our minds. Steer us in the direction that you would have us to go. Bless us this morning and bless us big, for we ask it in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's sing. I sense a lot of joy in the building this morning. Does everybody have joy this morning? Oh, man. That's, uh, yeah, I got a little joy. Yeah, yeah, I got some joy. Do you have some joy going on this morning? Yeah. All right, that's better. Well, let's sing about it, shall we? Joy unspeakable. I have found his grace is all complete. He's the fire.
does, like you got a little joy in there this morning. Amen. The old account was settled long ago. Hopefully, you've settled your account this morning. If you haven't, you're in the right place. Let's sing about that. There was a time on earth when in the book of heaven an old account was standing for sin yet unforgiven. My name was at the top and many things below. I went unto the keeper and said long ago, long ago, long ago. Yes, the old account was settled long ago. Thus he has commanded if you would enter in. And then if you should live a hundred years below, and everybody said amen. Yeah. Up there, you'll not regret it because why? You settled long ago. Let's sing it together, shall we? Here we go. Oh, sinner, seek the Lord. Repent of all your sin. For thus he has commanded if you would enter. God bless you. And at this time, we're going to have our missionary moment. Come on up, brother. Good morning. Good morning. Today, we want to see what God is doing in a place called, oops, we'll get it. A place called Daimapur, India. And Dhimapur is in northeast India. Um, it's in, in an area that is called Nagaland. And the light purple, or the here is, that's the Dhimapur province. And there's a city in there also, we'll see. It's connected to India, if you want to say connected. And they call it the chicken's neck. And it's a really skinny neck. There is a corridor about 10 miles wide and 30 miles long that connects Hindu India with Christian Nagaland. It's a really pretty country. Uh, a lot of people say it's the Switzerland of India. 
the city of Daimapur, it is like most cities, nothing special. What's the country like in the area? It's mostly Christian. And it is an agrarian economy and heavily tribal. There are 33 major tribes in Nagaland and countless smaller tribes. Um, frankly, the Nagas would just as soon have India go away. Um, and what didn't help things was the Naga event, which happened in 2021. 14 uh, tribal members were killed by Indian security police because they thought they were re rebels. In 2010, this church um, took on Tamsing Dilbung as a missionary, and Ring and Tamsing were married the next year. And Tamsing did sports ministries in all of Nagaland, and he also was involved in church planting, mostly in the, the uh, tribal areas. And yes, that is a church with thatch walls. So they use whatever ingredients they had on hand. Ring was along uh, to help out. Uh, when they would go to a sporting event, the, everybody came out. So she often did things for the younger kids that maybe weren't part of the sporting event. And um, the kids there are just like kids here. If you've got a tub full of water balloons, somebody's going to get wet real soon. <laughs> things were going well. Uh, Tam Singh's ministry was growing. Uh, a daughter was born, uh, Princey was her name. They had problems like everybody else, financial, they needed to get additional support. Tam Singh was supported by another sports or organization, including our church. Um, so uh, we bought, this church bought a keyboard for Ring so that she could give piano lessons and supplement their income. And medically, Tam Singh had diabetes and it was serious. They were looking forward to 2021. Tam Singh was scheduled to be uh, ordained in July, and it looked like COVID was finally ending so they could get back to their ministries, which had been virtually shut down for a couple of years. But on May 31st, Tam Singh went home to be with his savior, and he died from COVID. Now the new reality for Ring is she's now a mom with two kids. And she went from being the wife of a sports, event, sports evangelist to what do I do now? And what she did was she started ministering to women in the churches in Nagaland and also in the tribal areas. And on, in July's connections, you will be able to read uh, what Ring is now doing she is a full-fledged missionary for us, but what she is now doing in Nagaland, and also the progress on an orphanage that she and Tam Singh started several years back. But God, now that she's a widow with two kids, in Psalm 68, 5, a father to the fatherless, defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. And Psalm 146, 9, the Lord watches over the foreigner and sustains the fatherless and the widow. And I want to read you uh, an email we got from Ring just uh, yesterday, and I didn't have time to put it in the PowerPoint, because we asked her about her support. And she says, I receive monthly support only from my Lincoln Community Church. So grateful to LCC. With your support, I manage my seven children, two kids of her own, a nephew, and four orphans, and various ministries. I am beyond words for the great support. May God bless all my dear members of LCC. So good on you, church. Now, what was interesting to me is, this is now July, in June, the missions committee was able to increase Ring's support. And she didn't know that at the time this letter was written. So I thought, thank you, Lord. <laughs> More recently in May and June of this year, just to give you an example of what she's done, she was a resource leader uh, at, at a church event in um, Manipur, which is a state that's not far from Nagaland. 
and she ministered to mothers in the Chakosang tribe, and that's one of the many ethnic groups in Nagaland, and the folks there are known for their really ornate dress, both men and women. So going forward, what can we do? And we can pray for Ring. She's now, oh, the, the other good news, she pray for her, but she now has an advocate. And what's an advocate? We're all old enough to remember what pen pals were like. Well, an advocate is a pen pal arrangement for grown-ups. And that person will stay in touch with Ring, write to her, email, uh, and let her know what's going on in the church and also let the church know what's going on with Ring. Oh, I forgot. Uh, some of our LCC missionary members, missionary committee members, they are advocates for more than one person. And it would be nice if it was just one-on-one. -on -one. They could use some help. And Henry Banda in Malawi, uh, he is a sports, he's in sports ministry. He could use an advocate too. And hint, hint, that's a little nudge for some of the guys. And if you'd like to check out what it might mean to become an advocate, um, Margie Holtz and Pam Curtis are going to be in the lobby. They'll be somewhere. You'll find them. If you can't find them, find me, and I'll point you in the right direction. But the advocate role is something that every one of us could do, and it is thrilling to get to know someone that you may never meet personally this side of heaven, but you'll get to know them really well. Thank you. Wow, what a sad story. Pastor, would it be, I don't know, I just feel led to, uh, would it be a problem if we just took up an offering right now for Ring? Would that throw everybody off? Betty, could you have the uh, ushers come and bring the uh, offering plates, the bags? Let's, let's just take an offering for Ring right now, shall we? Let's see if we can Let's see if we can bless her heart this morning. And while we're doing that, we'll sing our, our last song here. Just a closer walk with thee. Carol, would you put this in that bag for us? Thank you. Shall we? Thank you for allowing me to change the order there for a minute. Here we go. I am weak, but thou art strong.
Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that wonderful singing. Thank you for that, too. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, Pastor Jody mentioned yesterday about the women's event, and uh, they had uh, what they called jewels for Jesus there yesterday where you could buy uh, nice uh, jewelry. Somebody bought a couple of necklaces at evidently the jewels for Jesus, and they were found dropped in the parking lot out here. So if you bought some necklaces yesterday and you got home and you didn't have them, <laughs> here they are. We'll put them, we'll put them outside in the foyer in the, on the lost and found uh, thing out there. Also, uh, if you brought uh, a baby picture for that event yesterday and you didn't pick it up, they're out there on the table in the foyer. You can pick it up when you leave after church this morning. Our beautiful altar flowers this morning are provided by Bob and Susan Mole, who are celebrating their 36th wedding anniversary. Yeah. Thank you, Bob and Susan. We have some other anniversaries this morning. Jim and Barbara Bartol are celebrating their 24th wedding anniversary. And George and Carol Glosh are celebrating their 38th anniversary and Bob and Nadine Southern are celebrating their 67th wedding anniversary that's hard to get my head around I'm not even that old it's worth a shot our food drive starts next Sunday, the 21st. If you're interested in participating in that, feel free to do so. Bring any uh, non-perishable items that you would like to donate, and uh, our folks will be glad to distribute those for you. In two weeks, on the 28th, we're going to have a movie and a hot dog night, and it's going to be called Born to Win. Sunday, July 28th, hot dogs at 5, movie at 5.30. All right. This morning, uh, I want to mention our prayer room again. Uh, I try to mention that every once in a while, keep it in the forefront of your memory. Uh, we have an elder and uh, his wife over there sometimes. If you need extra prayer, if, if there's somebody that you just want to pour your heart out to and uh, just have somebody comfort you, they're there to pray with you. So utilize that if you can. And also, talking about prayer time, Monday mornings at 8 a.m., yeah, that's 8 a.m., we have a prayer time every Monday morning in room 122 back here in our, in our office complex. If you'd like to be a part of that, we would love to have you come and pray with us every Monday morning. Um, there are so many people on our... Uh, you know, we run out of room on the back of our bulletin sometimes for people to pray for. I mean, Margot Gates, Jim Williams, Gary Prawl, Rami Kim, Walt Peterson, Janet Dahl, Sue and Lou Sanchez's uh, grandson's wife, Angela. And I want you to notice Don Obella on that list. It says Don is currently at home on hospice care. I'm sorry to tell you that Don passed away this week, and he is in heaven. We need to pray for his family this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for doing that. And again, we have so many folks that we could, we could list on here, but we just run out of room. So as uh, Jim plays softly, or yeah, there you are. Hi, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Mess me up over here, man. As Jim plays softly for a minute, you might have somebody on, on your mind this morning that you would like to bring to the Lord. As we take just a moment, let Jim play, bring those folks to the Lord, and then let me allow, allow me to close this in prayer.
Father, we are so thankful that we can be in your house this morning and bring our prayers to you, knowing that you listen, knowing that you hear every word we say, and probably even words that we don't even know how to say, Lord, but you hear our spirit. We pray that you would take all of those that we lift up to you today and do your will in each life. Father, we pray for all the sick in our church, all those who are hurting, all those who are grieving, especially for Don Bella's family today, Lord. We pray that you would lift them up and give them a comfort that only you can. Also, we want to pray for our church, Father. Give us wisdom, give us guidance, help us to continue to grow, not necessarily numerically, but in spirit and in truth, in maturity and growth in our Christian walk, Lord. And Father, we are, uh, I pray for our country every week, but Lord, we, <laughs> we need some prayer. As I'm sure the entire world knows by now, our former president, they attempted to assassinate him yesterday. And by God's grace and God's mercy, he was just wounded in his ear. And hopefully he's doing fine. Father, I, I don't know what side of the aisle anybody is on. I don't care what their politics are. Father, we need to pray for our country. And also for Pastor Jody, as he comes and he brings the message this morning, we pray that you would open our hearts and our ears and we would be willing to hear what you have for us. And Father, as we take our regular offering, I pray that everything that we take in would go for your honor, your glory, your kingdom, Lord, that it may be built even farther and that we may be able to use it to reach out to our community and our world. And Father, we will close our prayer time as you taught us in your word with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God bless. First, I want to thank you all for praying for me and to thank God that I'm well enough to sing for him and for you today. Second, I want to share a little bit about the song I'm singing. While I was recently on a mostly silent retreat, I came across this song and God seemed to want me to sing it for you. It seemed like one of the older hymns our church family loves so much. But when I looked up the composer, I was surprised to find it had been written in 1984. I love the story about the song. Martin Nystrom was a music teacher who was going through a difficult time. A friend suggested he go on a water fast and seek God's will for him. On day 19 of the water fast, while sitting at the piano, composing a tune, he glanced over at his Bible and was struck by the verse. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. From Psalm 42, verse one. And the entire song was written in minutes after that, flowing freely from the Holy Spirit. I will be signing as well as singing this morning to the best of my ability. And I hope this musical prayer blesses you and inspires you. And I will ask you to join me in singing at the end. So 
beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I don't know about you, but I get a front row seat and I'm sitting right next to the piano. And you know, Jim Brown, he's not that bad either, is he? <laughs> if we could just get him to stay at the piano, you know. Um, as a senior pastor, it is constitutionally required that if we have a new position at the church that I'm to announce that to the congregation. Today I want to announce that uh, Norm Shockley will now be our business manager. There are some things that happen with the state, state regulations. They see us as a business even though we are a nonprofit. And sometimes the things from the state, sometimes insurance matters, sometimes they just, they just fall between the cracks. Norm is putting together a program. He's uh, volunteered to be the new business manager at Lincoln Community Church. We've never had one before. We never needed one before. And so we, uh, we uh, had the elders meeting this week, and the elders decided that uh, Norm would be the good guy to do that. We've also decided to pay him twice the amount that an elder gets. So, thank you, Norm. Uh, we encourage people to bring their Bible to, uh, to church. I don't think that there's a more powerful place for a Bible to be than in church when, you're, when you come in, uh, uh, to, to worship. Uh, most of the time, we take a little passage and we're, we stay there most of the day. Today, we are going to bounce around a little bit. And so, um, if you're going to try to keep up with that, then uh, I just want to let you know that your, uh, the scriptures are in your uh, bulletin today. I've entitled the sermon, Christian. What is a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian? Is the word Christian even in the Bible? How do you become a Christian? And can you ever stop being a Christian? You know, those are really great questions. You would have to be a genius just to think, to ask those questions. I'm glad I asked them. <laughs> My problem is I'm not sure that I'm smart enough to answer all those questions, but the preacher always has a fail-safe to fall back on when we don't know the answer. We call it the Bible. And my problem is uh, not a problem any longer if I'm looking for the answers in the Word of God. So today we're going to ask some questions that we think we might already know the answer to. And then we're going to look at um, more, um, more, well, I don't know what in the world we're going to do. <laughs> we're going to look into the Bible to find some things that we might already think that we know the answer to. And then we're going to look back into the Bible for some deeper truths. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne, we acknowledge that Jesus Christ is your Son that he is our Savior, the promised Messiah of the Old Testament. And we would pray that you would teach us what you want us to know through your Holy Spirit. Bless us, Lord, and bless us big today as you show us the path that you want us to take. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. According to a 2023 Gallup poll, 74% of Americans living in the United States say that they believe in God. 68% of people say that they are a Christian. So what is a Christian? The answer is not as easy as you think it might be. Everything depends on how you define the word. You can't really tell a Christian uh, who is a Christian and who is not a Christian until you know what the word means. You could go to any city in the country and start asking people, uh, are you a Christian? And some people will say, well, yeah, I'm a Christian. I was born in America. Some people will say, yeah, I'm a Christian. My grandma was a Christian. You could ask somebody, are you a Christian? And they'd say, yes, I attend Lincoln Community Church. Many people think they're Christians just because they say they are. So we have to know what the word means before we understand if we are one. The dictionary defines a Christian as someone who professes 
um, belief in Jesus Christ and his teachings. And that might be a real good place to start, but I'm not sure that's a complete picture of what a Christian is. The simple description of what a Christian should be would never, it would never be that easy. But I think the best, the simplest des definition of a Christian is the original translation meaning little Christs or the followers of Christ. It's a term that, well, it started with a little bit of contempt. In the beginning, it was not Christians who originally called themselves Christians. In the book of Acts, chapter 11, and the disciples were first called Christians in the city of Antioch. You know, the followers of Jesus Christ, they called themselves apostles. They called themselves disciples. They called each other brethren. And it was the people in Antioch that saw the way that these apostles and disciples and brethren treated one another. And so they called them Christians, little Christs. And Christian was not always complimentary. And the name Christian has not always enjoyed a totally positive image. Christians to the Romans were rebels. To the Jews, they were blasphemers. And even today, there are some countries that think that Christians are infidels. But to the Christian, to the Christian, over time, that insulting term has become a positive name. People like to use the name Christian to describe themselves because they go to church every once in a while or they live in a Christian nation. But we all know that going to church does not make you a Christian any more than walking through a car wash makes you a car. And there may be some people that think that if they belong to a certain organization or they give to charities or they do good works, that they have the right to call themselves Christians. Being a Christian is more, it's more than just having the name. And if you call yourself a Christian, it doesn't bother me if you identify yourself that way. If you were to tell me that you are a Hindu, I will not say that you're not. And if you call yourself a Christian, far be it from me to argue with you. But for me, I want to use my Bible to describe my faith. I want to know what the Bible says about Christians. That's not going to be an easy thing off the top because out of 30,000 verses in the Bible, it's only mentioned three times. We just read Acts 11:26, and in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. King Agrippa, he said to the apostle Paul, in a short time, would you persuade me to be a Christian? And the apostle Peter wrote, yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in that name. There is a sense of pride in the name Christian. And I'm not sure any preacher could cover every aspect of being a Christian in one sermon. But there are some basics that we should understand about what is a Christian. A true Christian is that man or a woman who has put their faith, their trust in the work of Jesus Christ, and then, and then that person does their finest impersonation of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is simply this, that God created you. God loves you. But there's this thing in this world called sin, and we have separated ourselves from God because of the sin, and yet God still loves us. He loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. 1 John 2.2, 2, and Christ is the propitiation for our sin, but not for ours alone, but for the sins of the whole world. We look at the congregation here today, and we can rightly say that Christ died for our sins, but he died for the sins of the whole world, not just us. You see, a Christian believes that Jesus died on the cross for the payment of sin, sin for the world. Then he was buried in the tomb. A Christian is one who believes that Jesus' resurrection from the grave into the kingdom of heaven is what's waiting for us. A Christian is that man or woman that shows the world that a Christian, a Christian is known by their love. In the Gospel of John, Jesus says these words, By this, 
the whole world will know that you are my disciple by your love for one another. Notice that Jesus said the whole world. If you're a Christian, you will not just show some people that you have love. You will show the whole world that you are a Christian by the love we have for one another. So let me pause and ask you a question that I don't want you to answer out loud. Would the whole world be able to tell you Tell that you are a Christian by the way you show your love to another. See, a Christian knows that they are a child of God. They're part of the family, and they have eternal life in Christ. In the Gospel of John, chapter 1, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be called a child of God, even to those who believe in his name. I don't know about you, but I like being referred to as a child of God. And the Christian understands that they are welcomed and received into the family of God. And God knows how to treat a family member. Amen? Amen. Say it like you mean it. Amen. A Christian's faith has the idea that we are to rest upon Jesus, that Jesus will support us. And we believe that we have eternal love of God as a Christian. Eternal love forever and ever. You see, the Christian believes in something, and the Christian follows someone, and then they live a life in the family of God. A Christian is known by many names. In uh, 1 Peter, Peter writes, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous night, name, or light. Look at all those wonderful names that the Bible tells us. What wonderful titles a Christian is. A chosen people. God has selected Christians from all nations, from all kingdoms, from every clan to be his very own. Every Christian is part of the royal priesthood. I like that name too. I like that title. It means that we are a kingdom full of priests. And every priest, every priest has a personal relationship with God. God has called us out of the darkness to be his unique possession. He created us. He loves us. And for those members of our church that are in the law enforcement community, literally, we are in his custody. Do you see yourself as a chosen person? Do you see yourself as part of the royal priesthood? Do you see yourself as a personal possession of the king? You do if you're a Christian because that's how God sees you. That's how God sees a person who's called a Christian. Acts chapter 2. And Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Christian? The Christian is that man or a woman who's been filled with the Holy Spirit. We've been given gifts by the Holy Spirit to accomplish the work of God here on earth, here in this church. And we should understand that um, that might not always mean that we can work miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit, but it does mean that we receive the influence of the Holy Spirit inside. And these spiritual gifts are given by doing the work, given by God for doing the work at ministry. It sets our priorities in life. And when you use your spiritual gift, it allows God to work through you. You literally you literally become a partner with God. And while we know that the Holy Spirit can convict us of our sin when we have misstepped, we should never fear that because it's the Holy Spirit. There's peace. There's a calmness. And there is a joy that can only come from the Holy Spirit. God has given us a gift of a Holy Spirit. And this is what a Christian has. Those things that I mentioned, those are just, I'm just scratching the surface. I'm not even focused on the totality 
of what a Christian is. And so we can be confident that if we're all those things that I just talked about, there is so much more. But what does it mean to literally be a Christian? It means that what you were yesterday is not what you are today. 1 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are new. You may have walked in darkness, but now you're walking in the light. You may have belonged to the world, but now you belong to the Lord. You have passed through death into eternal life. What you were before is not what you are today, at least not in God's eyes. Because this is the way I think of it. Your words are different. Your thoughts are different. Your deeds are different from what they used to be. And I've seen this in my own life. Even the way you walk is different because you are a Christian. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. And this new man or woman may still stumble. We may still fall. But if the inside has changed, the spirit has changed, the outside is going to follow the new. The new man or woman um, will see the world with different eyes. And that's when we show the love to the whole world Old things have passed away. To be called a Christian means not to be judgmental. Matthew 7, 1, do not judge so that you will not be judged. You know, it is the ordinary temper of human beings that we judge others. But what we were is not what we are today. A Christian is merciful. Luke 6, 36, be merciful just as your father is merciful. Our example of mercy comes from the Father's example of His mercy that He showed us. And a Christian? A Christian is holy. 1 Peter 1.16 Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. To not judge anyone. To show mercy. To be holy. These are not things of the world. These are the things of God. And if we really want to know how to live as a Christian, all we have to do is look for good instruction in the Bible, and the Bible will teach us. We become a Christian when we begin to understand that the sin in our life had to be, had to be paid by someone. And that someone is Jesus Christ, and by faith we believe that he has paid the price. But I would be responsible to God if I thought that all you had to do is think that Jesus is Lord to enter into the kingdom of heaven. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father. In the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah, he talked about a people that um, they draw near to God with their mouth. They honor God with their lips. He says, but their heart... Their heart is far from God, and it sounds like to me it's possible to honor God with our lips and not be a real Christian. A true Christian is that man or woman who chooses to worship God according to the Word of God because a Christian, a Christian will speak about Jesus. Matthew chapter 10, Jesus said, Therefore, everyone who confesses me before people I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. It is in this confession that we publicly own Jesus. And he publicly owns us. It was two years ago, right here, right here in our sanctuary, a gentleman said, I think that I'd like to come to the Lord and I said, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? And he said, I do. I said, do you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? He said, I do. I said, do you believe that God showed power when he raised Jesus Christ from the dead? He said, I do. He publicly professed Jesus Christ. I know that I will see that brother 
in heaven because he has confessed Jesus and Jesus will confess him. You see, we cannot deny the Savior. We cannot ignore the Messiah. We cannot keep quiet about the Son of God or he will keep quiet about us. And the world will know a true Christian when he speaks of Jesus Christ. And the final question we're going to answer today is, can we ever stop being a Christian? Well, I know that we can stop acting like a Christian sometimes, but according to the doctrine of the Bible, and the doctrine is simply what we believe about the Bible, once a person is truly saved, they cannot, cannot lose their salvation. Salvation is a gift of God, and God's gifts are irrevocable. And you might say, well... Preacher, how do you know God's gifts are irrevocable? I'm glad you asked. Romans 11:29. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Jesus was speaking to the Pharisee named Nicodemus, and he was talking. He said, unless a person is born again by the Spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God, because what is born is born of the Spirit. And he says, it must be born again. And if we really saw born again as the miracle that it really is, we would put that on an even basis with the act of creation. In everyday language, once a baby is born, a baby cannot be unborn. And so when a person becomes a Christian, he cannot. He cannot go back to what he once was. And because we are a new creation, old things have passed away. Behold, all things are new forever. Paul wrote in his letter to the Romans, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. So how does that prove that that we cannot lose our salvation? Because it is a love that endures It's a love that never ends because our salvation does not depend on us. It depends on God. It is the Christian who um, knows that Christ is with us in all of our trials, all of our good days, and all of our bad days because he loves us without end. And this tells me that the Christian, that we will win the race. We will overcome the enemy. We cannot lose the battle because the battle is not ours. The battle belongs to God. And some people might say, well, yeah, I get it. Nothing can separate me from God. But I could just walk away. John chapter 10. Jesus said, I give eternal life to them and they will never perish. And no one shall snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. There is a love that endures. And that love is from God. And nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. No one. No one is great enough to take you away from God. Not even you. You know that the world today, the world today has confusing ideas of what a Christian is. But we should not. We should take that name and understand that there's pride in the name Christian. Understand that being called Christian is so much, so much more than just having a name. So what's the preacher saying today? Well, I'm saying that there are reasons why being a Christian is totally worth it. There is joy knowing that you have put all your things in order before God and before man. And with the forgiveness, the Christian is no longer an enemy of God. We have a peace. There's a joy that nothing, no one, nowhere can take away. Even when life is pressing you in on all sides, we know that God is in control and we can have that perfect peace, that perfect confidence in his care. And if you're a Christian, you will always, always have something to do on a Sunday morning.
God be praised. Let's all stand, shall we? Let's sing a couple of verses of that song, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. comes to dismiss us in prayer, I was handed a note a minute ago. This is the giving for Ring this morning, the special offering that we took, $3,532. Every Monday morning, we gather in room 122 and we pray for everything, but we pray for our missionaries. God bless you. Thank you so much, brother. What a powerful message today. Let's take it home with us and reach out and share it with others and live the word. Dear Father in heaven, we come before you at this time to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for so many things. Number one, we thank you for you. We thank you for accepting us to be part of your family. And most of all, Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. Father, we ask you to continue to be with us, be with this church, be with the congregation. Help all of us to live the Great Commission and reach out and touch others. We are all missionaries preaching your word wherever we go and the way we live. Thank you, Lord. Keep us well. And we thank you again for this wonderful message that we've received today. These things we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.